Hello, and welcome to the Producers Guild conversation with the creative team behind Mosul. We'd like to thank our friends for making this Q&A possible, and it is my pleasure to introduce our moderator today. Jazz Tanke is the artisan's editor for Variety and a part of the Variety Awards circuit team. Welcome Jazz, welcome panelists, and please take it away. Thank you, Kyle, and thank you to the Producers Guild. I'm so honored to be here today to talk about Mosul, which is now streaming on Netflix. So just to give you a little bit of a uh, synopsis on the film, uh, the story follows the tale of, um, yeah, it's based on a New Yorker article. So when ISIS took their homes, families, and city, one group of men fought to take it all back. It's the story of Nineveh, which is a SWAT team, a renegade police unit who waged a guerrilla operation against ISIS in a desperate struggle to save their home city. So without further ado, let me welcome today's panelists, producers, Anthony Russo, Joe Russo, Mike LaRocca, and executive producer, Mohammed al Darad. Sorry, let me take, let me take Mohammed's name again, Mohammed al Daraji. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Thank you. Hiya. Great to be here, Jess. Thank you. So as I mentioned, I'm, and I'm really excited to have this conversation because as I mentioned, the film is based on a New York, New Yorker article called The Avengers of Mosul. So how did it come your way? Joe, do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, we have a company called Agbo that Anth and I and Mike all work at. Our, two of our partners there are Christopher Marcus and Steve McFeely, who wrote um, all four uh, Marvel films that Anth and I directed um, over, with Marvel. And Steve McFeely read the article originally in The New Yorker and called Anth and I and said, this, is, this might be the best piece of journalism I've read in a long time, or it was Marcus read it. And do you remember? It was one of the two of them. I, I was trying to remember today. I, I can't remember myself. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, said that they teared up when they read the article, and that was really profound, and, and suggested that we read it. And part of our, our, our daily conversation as, as partners with, with Chris and Steve over the last decade has been political conversations. We're all politically minded. Um, you know, we're very fortunate with Marvel who have traveled the world several times over uh, to promote these films, going into regional markets that other filmmakers don't get to go to, meeting the fans, meeting people, discussing the, the issues in their region and the way that they perceive, um, uh, you know, Hollywood filmmaking. Um, and, uh, and so having read the article, we knew that uh, it was, was something that needed to be made into a film. And, and uh, it, was a, it was a priority at Agbo and a priority of Anthony's to start making regional stories um, that had not been made before and using our brand capital and leverage from those Marvel films to help get those difficult stories made. What I love about it is it's such a great title because that name, you know, if you watch the news in the 90s, what was depicted with it was something so different. And you've now taken Mosul, turned it on its head and it's breaking down barriers you know, and you show, you know, the Arab world as heroic and shifting the narrative and perspective. Why is it so important to shift the perspective and tell these stories? Um, I mean, uh, um, the, the article was, was kind of a revelation for us on that level in terms of what you're speaking about. Uh, you know, it's very, when you're, when you're not living in a war zone and you're reading about it from the outside, it can be very hard to understand exactly what's happening and how the things are happening. Um, that article took such a very grounded human approach to the experience of what was happening. The, the, incident, the, the, the experience became instantly relatable. All of a sudden you can feel yourself being there in Mosul with those people because you could understand them on a human level so well at that point. And that was a revelation. I think that was something that Joe and I were always looking for is like, how do you find, how do you find your way in on a very personal level to these very complex political situations and social situations that are happening around the world? And this was a great uh, door for us into this issue. Now, Muhammad can speak about it from a completely different point of view 
which is even more valid, valid and valuable, of course, because he can talk as a first person narrator to the experience. You know, but for us, we were really looking for a way in. Part of our way in was to find this article. Part of our way in was to find Muhammad, you know, part and that and then continue that process uh, through our creative collaborations in terms of how we put this movie together. Mohammed, talk about that. Uh, talk about how you actually got involved and in be, you know, how coming in from this first person perspective. I think when Michael called me, I was in Baghdad and he told me about the project and I was, I was sort of, you know, okay, because I got a lot of call from producer from, from LA to call me about certain projects, some advice, you know? And then uh, he and Matthew sent me the script and it was late in the night in, in Baghdad, it's like 3 a.m. and I, I read it. I finished it around 5 a.m. and I was crying when I read the script. And I just cried because I remember the day when Mosul felt in the hand of ISIS. This failure that you have, when Mosul felt in the hand of ISIS in, two, in 2014, you know, the whole nation, the whole Arab world, the Muslim is basically like felt at that moment and and when i read the script it like it's like i it's like the feeling of i get back again uh, there is there is there is a feeling of heroic there is a feeling of some some justice to give to the people there i mean i have people friend and, and family and and lost in mosul uh, fight for mosul killed for mosul you know during during the mosul event I used to train uh, Iraqi filmmaker, and as soon as they finish, they go to join the army to do to be a, to be a, like a cameraman or something to work in the media. So when I read the script of Matthew, I said, "Wow, this is not just a film. This is also part of me as Muhammad as Iraqi. It's my duty to help and to support this project and to bring it to the level where if Iraqis see it, they will be feel okay. We are proud of ourselves, and I think the whole team." did an amazing job. I mean, the decision of, from producer to do it in Arabic. This is, this is, this is big, 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 like it's not <laughs> easy. Who's your audience? What, where's, what's your market, you know? And, and then you choose to do it in, in the language of Arabic language. And then you don't have any American character on the film and, and only Arabic, Iraqi speaking, and they are the main character. When I read it, I couldn't believe it. And then I thought, is something wrong? Is this guy not thinking about, about the market, not thinking about anything? And then I called Matthew after that, and it was a really important conversation uh, about how can I help and, and twist a couple of things and doing a couple of things. And we did, we did a great job to adjust, you know? And, and the team, they were really fighting to get all the cast coming from Iraq to, Morocco, you know, to get all these details and, and, and they put the effort uh, to make it so authentic, so, so come from Mosul. It looked like, with all the respect, it looked like coming from Iraqi filmmakers. This is what we try to do. It, you know, it like really details, details, and all the team that work in it was really having this kind of feeling. The Iraqi team I'm talking about, they have sort of not only is a work, not only is a film, it is duty. It is like, this is for our nation. This is for Iraq. I mean, if you know what happened in Iraq now about Mosul, is the main topic in Iraq since came in Netflix. And this is fantastic what film can do for nation. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about having the film, you know, told in Arabic, and that just makes the film more beautiful, adds the authenticity. Um, you know, Mike, when Matt said that's what he wanted to have the film, the film's language based as what was your reaction? And then also, as Mohammed said, you know, you don't have Hollywood stars. You've got, you know, you're casting, you know, Adabessa, you, you know, talk about that and if you received any kickback. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as Joe mentioned, we're, we're fortunate in the position that we're in at Agbo that we can take these kind of risks. There's not a lot of other companies that could do that. Um, but it also wasn't really a hesitation to us because I think it's impossible to imagine the movie any other way. Um, if you think about what this movie would be like um, with non-local actors and, and in English language, it's almost impossible to envision it. So I think from the jump, we had to make the decision that if we're gonna do this, because we were all so interested in it and moved by it and interested in it, that we had to do it in Arabic. Otherwise it just wasn't worth doing, period. 
Um, so the decision was made quickly. And, and once we did that, and then all the other decisions that followed um, were relatively easy because it was just a matter of, of doing the work and figuring out how to achieve that level of authenticity, who we could enlist, who the right dialogue, dialect coaches were. You know, it was challenging to find the cast for a variety of reasons, but the, the emotional decision and the business decision was made um, very early on. Yeah. Talk about the, you know, you, you, you talk about casting and saying it was difficult, like to break down like how the casting process for this was and how far you cast your net to build right. the perfect well, cast for Mosul. You know, we, we I hired Sarah Finn who's, who's collaborated with these guys on the Marvel movies and is, you know, arguably the top casting director in, in Hollywood right now. And, and I think she was very excited because for her, it's, it's a unique challenge and not something she'd done before. Um, and we worked with a, a local casting director out of Jordan who was able to cast in that for us regionally. Um, and then we actually put out flyers in, in you know, areas that had a large portion of, of Iraqi population and just diaspora that we could reach out to. Um, we found that actually traveling, and Mohammed could speak to this with more detail, traveling people from Iraq itself was extremely challenging because it's very hard for, for Iraqis, you know, sadly, unfortunately, to get visas at the moment, especially on the kind of short notice that we needed, you know, to cast people as we were moving towards production. So it ended up that we found a lot of, of folks that, that were spread all over the world, um, you know, and, and most notably Suhail, who plays the major. Um, had fled Iraq following the first Gulf War and, and had a small part in, in Hurt Locker. He's, I don't know how anyone remembers the movie, but he's in the final scene. He's the guy in the black jacket who's starting to blow himself up. And when we were scouting in Jordan, because originally we were deciding between Jordan and Morocco, um, the Jordanian casting director that we met with who had worked on Hurt Locker said, well, you got to find this guy, Suhail. Um, he subsequently resettled and he's working at a retirement home in, in, in uh, Arizona. Um, and so we called him up and sort of, I think, came out of the blue and said, how do you want to, you know, do you want to be in this movie? And, and I think he's probably, you know, everybody's extremely well cast, but to me, that's probably the most emotional and interesting story of, of anyone. And everyone has an interesting story, but to find this guy who had sort of had to abandon his career and his dreams as an actor, um, and then for him to deliver the way he did, and, and I think playing against type also, right? You know, you're so used to war movies being um, young, virile um, guys, but because of the way this war is fought, there's actually people who are fighting who are you know, on in years. Like you don't see, and, and American soldiers aren't in the field or past 30 or whatever it is. Um, but the major character who's based on, on the major, the actual major and the head of the SWAT team is much older. So to have this incredible face and character um, was a great opportunity. Yeah. And in contrast, you know, you've got Adam Besser, and I remember him. I, I had to look up where I'd seen him before in The Blessed. Where did you discover Adam, Joe, or Anthony? Do you want to talk about casting Adam Besser? Yeah, Adam actually makes also makes an appearance in uh, Extraction, which we did for Netflix. Suvail is actually going to make an appearance in Cherry, which uh, is a movie Anthony and I directed mm -hmm. our latest year. So. We're, you know, we love discovering new talent and then um, working with that talent over and over, especially when they're of such high quality of character uh, as uh, individuals as Suhail and Adam are. And I believe uh, Adam we found um, out of France uh, and he was actually, you know, uh, had an accomplished uh, career, uh, perform a few performances that were very notable up to that point. So he was one of the easier folks to find. I think Suhail, the movie wouldn't have worked had we not found Suhail. And I think that in Suhail, there's truly a, it's like the Tom Hanks of Iraq was, you know, um, forced out of the country and um, um, not acting anymore, which was a tragedy because he's one of the best actors we've ever worked with. Um, so I, I just think in general, the, 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 the Casting story on the movie is profound. And if you start, if you take Sahil's role in Hurt Locker as an example, one of the more um, moving moments that Anth and I have ever had on set, directing or producing, was talking to the cast prior to shooting, where they said to us that this was the first time that they had an opportunity to play a protagonist uh, uh, in a Hollywood film, uh, and not a terrorist or uh, um, a villain, and uh, and in a way, in twenty the fact that it's twenty twenty, 
and that you know that they they don't get those kinds of opportunities. It's tragic, and I think ultimately um, was the reason that we made the film. Yeah, Mohammed, how has the reaction been to the film so far, especially in Iraq, where the film is actually set to have this story told of heroism as opposed to terrorism, which you know so very often we've seen in film. Let's imagine my my phone never stopped from messaging or calling from from people, individual. It was amazing. I mean, I mean, the reaction to us is it still topic, still talking about it, like in the media, on the street, and this is like really focus point about Muslim, about Iraqi man fighting to save his family. I mean, I made my films and my films in, in different level and different journey, you know, and I took my character always in my character as like a victim and by the end, try to get to come to this certain point, you know, but Mosul is different. Mosul is like different to production level, different way of telling the story. And, and they were really attached on it. And I received so much message uh, from people saying, thank you me, but basically get, try to thank the, the team behind it and, and the way how they portray it. And they say, do you have more? Do you, can Are you making another films about Mosul, about the story of Iraq? Because we believe each individual in Iraq have a story to tell through the, the, the time of the war and what happened with us in the last 40 years. So um, it is fantastic, you know, and, and uh, this, this film encouraged me that my next film should be coming to the same level so I can be seen a lot by Iraqi people like Musa. Yeah, I love that. And there is a ton of action in this film. Um, talk about working with the actors and training them um, and working with military advisors too, to ensure, again, it goes back to the authenticity um, and getting the actors trained for those action sequences. I mean, Matthew did an amazing job, like in the way how how he would the team cast those those guys because you have certain people like they play a small role and they never act in their life. One of them is mm -hmm. the guys he studied dentist in in, in Michigan. You know, and he saw this advertisement on on, on the board in, in the university, and and he make a call to the casting team, and then he become part of the of of the team. I think um, the way how we as a team from Iraqi side, Dr. Abbas and Zainab and Sam, all of us worked together, try to to do like how can we make it like so Iraqi and nail everything? Because you know, Adam, for example, he's Tunisian. Iraqi dialect is very difficult for him, but we manage, like, for example, what we tell Adam that Iraqi could. So the, his Arabic is not necessary to be the accent in the Iraqi way, in the Arabic way. And, and the same with the rest of the team. And, 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 and the joke, how we turn, like, a, like a Matthew write a nice joke or, or swearing, you know, for, for Suhail to say it, how we turn this in Iraqi. So when the Iraqi listens and, oh, this is like a, if I can swear, like this and this, you know. And so, so this kind of details, like uh, Dr. Abbas did a good job, and and the whole team like really did good job. And how can we do it in the in the way how Matthew wanted, how his vision of those character and and build it around it, and and they were really like band of brother together. Like sometime when they train, like preparing for a scene, like Suhail is trying to correct Adam, Adam listen to Suhail, you know, Adam come to Suhail, say to him, okay, come to me, come to Dr. Abbas, you know, like all of us. And then we came to Matthew with this portrait, okay, what do you think? They said, okay, we need to correct this, we need to do this. So it's like, uh, I think the, the, the beautiful thing, uh, because I work in different production in, in the US, is the trust. The production team, the producer, how they have been trust Matthew and trust us, it was very heavy response, really heavy response. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a director. When I trust somebody, like I give him everything, you know. So when they trust us, it was like for me always. I'm very tough with my with my small team, like Zainab, Sam, Abbas. You know, try to make sure that everything is work. You know, when I'm because I'm not always in the, in, in the set because I was in Iraq and receiving the footage. I make a call. I said, guys. This need maybe to be corrected. Maybe Adam need to be doing this and this. So this trust was very heavy in us. And also, we 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 I go back to this. It is duty. It's not only film to be uh, is a job. It's a duty to to make it 
to, to come to this level like what the Iraqi talk about it today. Yeah. Anthony, did you want to add to that about the, the military training that the actors had to go through? Yeah, and I will just echo what Muhammad was just yeah. saying as far as it was a duty. You know, I think all of us felt, aside from being um, the type of creative collaborators who really want to sort of identify people who can sort of build our vision together and who we can trust in the way that Muhammad was saying, like we, we felt like it was, we were all serving a higher purpose with this movie. It was, we wanted to make this movie because we felt it was very relevant to what was happening right now. And that we hope that it could play a part in the process of moving forward and healing from what has happened. So there was an urgency, there, there was a real emotional and psychological need for telling this story. Um, and I think that fed into the training, which is your question. Um, people took this so seriously, this film, because um, we knew what a, what a rare and special opportunity it was. Uh, so we, everybody wanted to be very authentic. There was a massive amount of research in the way that Muhammad was describing on everybody's part to make sure we are being authentic to the experience. And that included everybody involved. Um, and physically it was difficult. I mean, Joe and I are action fetishists. We, lo we love action. And we felt like the, the action in this film was a way for us to deliver a difficult story to a wider audience. You know, like our hope, for, you know, like you want to make a movie that people are going to watch. You want to make sure this story of what happened there in Mosul, at least one specific version of what happened there in Mosul, gets experienced by the widest possible audience. And so one way that we can do that is we can make a movie, even though it was very difficult what happened there, we can do it in a way that makes the movie more accessible to more people. And so people understand the language of an action film. They understand the language of a war movie. And we were working within that genre to sort of provide the sort of thrills and excitement and visceral um, interest that a, that a movie like that can in, and engender in a, in a viewer. Uh, while we are also telling a more unconventional, difficult story married with that. So the action was critically important in this movie because it was, it's, it's kind of how we make the, the pill go down, so to speak. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the sort of a, the more fun, viscerally fun part of the movie that helps you experience the more emotionally complicated part of the movie. And so the, we knew the action had to be delivered in a really top level way. And we had an amazing team starting with Matthew, the director, but our entire production team uh, was just top notch in terms of what we, what the movie was hoping to deliver on that level, on an action level. Joe, how did Matthew become like the perfect director for this? I mean, he's stellar and as, you know, as Mohammed, you know, you were saying there's also this emotion that he just delivers through his storytelling. Matt, what made him Matt, ideal, yeah. Matt is a very, Matt for one is one of the best screenwriters in the business. Um, so he's an incredible artist. He's a very passionate, very thoughtful, very political, very emotional human being. Uh, and someone that we adore um, um, on a human level. Uh, and, you know, he responded to this, what, what is what, perhaps one of the great tragedies of the century. Uh, is the is Mosul? The amount of human suffering uh, and strife that has gone on in that city is staggering and almost unfathomable. And the you know the article affected Matthew the same way it did us. Uh, and every project needs someone's lifeblood to be expended. Someone has to be the engine behind getting it made. And this was going to be no small feat. And Matthew, as I said, is a very passionate, dynamic person who is also an amazing writer. So he brought a lot to the table. And he said, listen, I would love to work on this. I want to write the script and I want to direct it. And he delivered us a first draft that was almost ready to shoot. That's how, how you know, invested he was in the material. We all read it and teared up and, and, and thought it was a fantastic script. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really important, I think, moving forward because media is a very powerful tool. 
It can also be a very dangerous tool uh, if it's used incorrectly. I think it's important to start having conversations about how media affects our perception, how it affects our perception of other people, of other cultures, um, and, uh, and how it may impact us in ways that are not productive. Uh, and I think it's important that we learn to start telling each other's stories. I think if you look at Chloe Zhao's career, she's done an exceptional job of finding stories to tell that are not her story, that are someone else's story, and investing herself in their story. And, and I think that's how we learn about each other. That's how we come to appreciate what, um, what others have gone through. Um, it's how you meet incredible artists like Muhammad uh, or find incredible actors like Suhail. Um, this is really the process uh, of, um, of Anthony and I going on a journey post-Marvel to use the brand, brand leverage to tell more unique stories, but also just for us as artists to be able to experience and celebrate and share um, other culture stories with them and with the world. And, it, you know, that just kind of leads to Netflix being the perfect home because it is going to be, you know, it, it's available around the world. Like, Mike, talk about Netflix being the perfect home for Mosul and sure. getting this story out, especially as it is a positive portrayal of a town and, you know, a country that you know, media has not been nice to. Right, and, and I think, you know, to, to be candid, originally we had contemplated this as theatrical and we'd gone through the process of selling territories and we'd actually made a deal um, with the studio called 101 here in, in the US, but as the pandemic um, sort of swallowed up the theatrical business, it became clear that, that we had to pivot. Um, and we'd always thought Netflix would be a perfect home for this, um, for all the reasons you're talking about, which is that they have instantaneous global viewership and penetration in, in all the meaningful territories. And, you know, we haven't had the, the, the results call with them yet. So I don't know the specific numbers, but certainly you can see where it ranks in, in various territories. Um, and, and, you know, it's been encouraging to see that it's the number three movie on the platform globally. Uh, it's over indexing and overperforming in a lot of markets. And, and you're right, there's, there's really no other platform right now that can instantaneously put it in as many homes and with as many eyeballs as they can. And I also think that they've done a really good job of lowering the barrier to entry on subtitles. And there's a lot of international series that have broken through on that for exactly that reason, which is you're scrolling through it. You might not be willing to go see a movie theatrically that subtitles because it, it seems like too much work, but it doesn't have that same impact on viewers in Netflix, or at least it seems that way to us. And, and you know, you have Fauda or um, the, the Money Heist or any of these shows that are working globally where subtitles is sort of an afterthought. And, and frankly, that was sort of part of our decision making and part of our inspiration up front is that we could point to Fauda or point to some of these other things that Netflix has done. And then the team there is, is fantastic and they generate great art, great trailers and the product, the, the actual platform is incredibly savvy and intuitive in, in getting it to an audience. So the fact that this movie is is grabbing as many people is just a testament to what they've built. Do you think, and I think this is going back to Joe's point, do you think that now, you know, with digital platforms such as HBO Max and Netflix um, and Hulu and Amazon, that we're going to start seeing more and more of these stories being told? And, yes, you know, 100%. Giving 100%. And I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's simple math for a lot of them, right, which is growth is in international, particularly for Netflix. I mean, there's more growth opportunity for HBO Max and some of the more recent entries into the streaming scene. But for Netflix, who has a pretty high degree of saturation here domestically, and needs to grow, um, they're looking to these markets. And, and the benefit of that is, is that there's an opportunity to tell stories in those markets. And those markets are valuable in a way that maybe they weren't traditionally theatrically. So absolutely, you're gonna see more and more of it. We're working on more and more of it. You know, we're doing a show at Amazon um, that's premised on that pretty much exactly, which is it's an English language show and then a series of spin-offs from that English language show in local language. And we're talking to Netflix about, um, you know, doing something similar with Extraction, which was, which was a movie we had with them this past spring that was a big success where we could take off some characters and then make stories that are more specific to the region that those characters come from. You shot the film in Morocco. Um, I know, Mike, you mentioned some challenges earlier about, you know, visa issues. 
but what were there any other challenges while shooting on location in Morocco? You know, I think we had a great experience shooting in Morocco. Um, you know, the, the dollar, it goes far there from a production standpoint. Um, you know, we had, we had looked at both Jordan and Morocco and, you know, the tragedy of the current status of, of Mosul is that we didn't need an intact city. Um, you know, Mosul is, is sadly left in ruins. And although Amman looks more like Mosul did, uh, it doesn't look like Mosul does now. So we were able to find a, a half built city outside on the outskirts of Marrakesh that was abandoned at some point in its construction. So we had city blocks wide worth that you know were easily doubled for the, for the ruined state of Mosul. Um, and there's a great local company there um, called Casbah Films um, that we hit it off with on the scout and they delivered, they were great. And the government was, was very helpful in terms of the military hardware we needed. So all in all, it was a, it was a pretty smooth production, um, you know, complicated in the planning, but in the execution, it was smooth, it was on budget, it was on time. Um, everybody was completely professional. And uh, yeah, we would go, we have gone back there. Joe and Anthony shot a, a large portion of, of Cherry with the, a lot of the same overlap just a few months ago. Um, Joe, is it nice to have to, to release a movie on Netflix and not to have to worry about opening weekend and box office? Without question. I mean, I think that, you know, Ant and I have a very interesting experience over the last 20 years having done features, television, biggest movies, littlest movies, comedy, drama, we've sort of been all over the map. And the thing that we're most excited about um, with uh, a company like Netflix involved in the future of distribution is, is that they've taken the stigma and the armchair quarterbacking of opening weekends off of movies. And I think that that was crippling films and it was crippling the types of films and it was making it really specific about what was going to work in the market. And it was getting narrower and narrower and more myopic. Because if a movie didn't kill it in opening weekend, then it wasn't a success. And that's a stigma. Yeah. But not every movie is, going, is built to kill it in opening weekend. Not every story should be built to have a, a gonzo opening weekend box office. Some stories require patience and, and care and time for the audience to find them. It's amazing about Netflix though, is that you can, you can put it on the platform and you mentioned this earlier, reach an international, every corner of the world like that. And so the movie becomes accessible to audiences that, uh, that you know, ha have a vested interest in the story. Number one in the Middle East, I think it did incredibly well in India. It did amazing in South America and parts of Europe. Um, so I think um, uh, it's, you know, it, it's been a very beneficial, but I also think that as artists, there are more options available to all of us now because of digital distributors. Yeah. I remember, um, you know, first writing about Extraction when it first came out and just the other week, my in-laws was like, yeah, we just discovered this film, Extraction. Like, I wrote about that like months ago, but they're discovering it over the thanks holiday, uh, Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Um, okay, last question. If there's one reason people should tune in to Mosul, what would that reason be? And Mohammed, I'll start with you. It's basically, I think as a, it's, how to say it is like, it's like Mosul is a film is very special very special with everything with everything on it basically i mean casting directing production and 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 Mosul also is make history history for from production point of view because i'm hoping that uh, you know what, what happened in 2020 with the life uh, with black life matter for us i think we did it earlier when when the decision was to make Mosul because you never think about it like five years ago or 10 years ago, I work in a green zone. Green zone was different story, different film and then Mosul. So I think, I think Mosul can, can, can bring and change history from, from the big studio to make something different than what's usually what's used to be. And, and we need to tell the story because the story needs to be told either from, from, from Baghdad or Palestine or or Morocco or China or, or, or New York, story need to be told and need to be told in, in authentic ways 
and 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 within emotional like how Matthew tried to say it is uh, tried to tell it is emotional you can see his emotional when he was talking with that cast you can see it on the big screen and I think that's what uh, Mosul is uh, for us Anthony yeah um I would say look I know probably anybody watching this is a cinephile and a film professional and has seen every movie ever made. The reason that you see Mosul is you have never seen a movie like this before. It's never been made. And I, I think that that's why it's valuable. Joe? Yeah, I agree with Anthony. I, mean, I think this is, you know, it's a, it, Matthew uh, made a beautifully rendered story uh, of, of human tragedy sacrifice and heroism um, uh, based in the truth of this city and, and what the city went through. Um, and, uh, and I think that, you know, for that reason, um, everyone should see this film to understand um, what's happening in the Middle East and what has been happening in the Middle East for the last several decades. And Mike, what's the one reason everybody should tune into Mosul, which is now streaming on Netflix? I think to see Suhail's performance, I think to me that's it's a revelation, um, it's a discovery, and and I think it's it's fresh, it's different, and and to see an actor like that, you know, sort of blossom in the way he has is, is amazing and, and worth worth uh, worth watching. Yeah, can I, add is... can I add one thing, please? The final scene. I think the people need to watch the final scene. It's maybe you don't you don't see it how we see it in Iraq. You know this with with this woman being pregnant and having baby from ISIS guy and the man that fight to get to her is accepting this baby. This scene is say a lot. It's say about people through the war time. It's say about the human suffering. You know, so that's when people need to go to see this scene. Actually, this is important scene for them. <laughs> I love that. And Sahel's performance just sticks with you. It resonates. And, you know, I agree 100%. So, yes, Mosul is now streaming on Netflix. And thank you, Joe, Anthony, Mike, Mohammed, and to the Producers Guild and the audience today for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jens. Appreciate it. Thank you.